This is a video on how to serve text-to-speech models using VLLM, which is an inference library. Basically, it allows you to take a GPU and get high throughput of converting text into speech. Now, this isn't very straightforward in open source. I'm not aware of many libraries or any library that can do this in a high throughput efficient way. The technical term that's important to achieve is continuous batching. But VLLM does achieve that with the Orpheus model although it produces tokens that are a bit messy to handle. So what I'll show you in this video is how to use that VLLM Orpheus implementation, but then to get the decoding correct so it actually produces speech that you are able to send back to a customer or use yourself. Now I'm going to run through how to do this just quickly without really explaining how it works, and then I'll just explain a little bit how I have set up uh, the decoding handling part. So go over to one-click LLMs. This is a public repo, Trellis Research one-click LLMs, and search for Orpheus. And if you go there, you'll find a link. Uh, it is an affiliate link for RunPod, but it gives you a template that is ready to go and just run. And if you want the fastest speed, you can actually get faster than human speech speed, I found, if you use a H100. Uh, maybe you can with an A100. I think it's hard on an A40, but I'm going to pick a H100-200 and put in Orpheus here. And just to take a look at the template, we're going to run the latest VLLM Docker image. We'll run with the Orpheus FT model. You could use here Canopy Labs. Uh, that's the official implementation, but there's a copy of it over at Unsloth that's not uh, gated, so you don't need a hugging face token. The D type data type will be automatic. Um, we need to trust remote code to load the tokenizer. We will set the max model length to 2048. That should allow for a few sentences of text. And we'll set the quantization to FP8. This will reduce the size of the weights being read into the inner part of the GPU, and it should give us a little acceleration. So with that, um, we would typically just launch the, launch the container. So we deploy it here on demand. And I actually have got one running already. Um, I'm actually running it with a custom model which is a fine-tuned model. So you can also use a fine-tuned model, make sure that it's merged. Uh, and it's going to be the exact same thing. If you're using the base model, just leave the template as it was. So this is up and running, and you'll need this ID here for when we're going to hit uh, the API. Now, what VLLM does is it exposes an OpenAI-style API on port 8000, and that port is available uh, through RunPod's external pro proxy. So we're going to need a script that's going to allow us to hit that. Now, you can check out the script if you go to the readme. I've put a copy of it right here. Um, but I'm going to go through it because I've also put a copy of it into the advanced inference repo. And the script is called Orpheus VLLM Client. And inside the script, uh, we're going to be able to set the model name that we're going to call. I'm going to call my custom model, uh, the sampling rate. And then we do need to put in the ID of the run pod uh, container. Uh, so the run pod pod is going to be set over here. You've got the default pod ID. So you want to paste in the pod ID right here so that you're able to hit the port 8000, which has been exposed. So we'll just go ahead and make a call uh, and see how this performs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this little uh, sample. And actually, I'm going to get it to say something custom. So let's just paste it over here for convenience. And we will say, find the scripts in the one click LLMs repo over on GitHub. Don't know if it'll pronounce LLMs correctly uh, for Trellis research, something like that. And we're going to pass in a flag here for the voice, which is Ronan. And if you watched my video on how to train Orpheus, you'll know that the prompt is set up by basically prepending Ronan colon space to this prompt we want to uh, convert into text. So I've moved into the text-to-speech folder on Sloth where this is. You can, of course, put the script anywhere if you grab it from the RunPod template. And I'm going to do uv run dash dash script. What this does is it will get uv to use a virtual environment that has these dependencies here listed in the script. And we will see what that comes back with. What it should do is save a file. So it's going to pass in the formatted prompt. You can see it's formatted with Ronan. It's got a special token before. It's got some special tokens afterwards. Here are all the uh, snack tokens coming back out. I have timed it. So you can see the LLM call took six seconds for this. And then the post-processing, which decodes it to voice, took 1.7 seconds. 
and it's been written to ronan.wav, ronan.wav. So we can have a listen. I hope it's good. Find the scripts in the one click LLMS repo. Okay, so I mean, that wasn't great, but that just shows you that I probably need to improve how I'm doing the fine tuning or and or use cloning. Let's just go back and I'm going to put in the original model. So instead of putting in that uh, fine tuned model, which needs a bit more work, I'm going to edit and I'm going to put in the Orpheus uh, model here. I'll click save and it's going to reboot this up here. So to do that, I'm going to go and into my script, I'm going to look for model, not the smack model, snack model, but this model here, save this. And now when I call it, I'm going to use one of the default Orpheus voices. So instead of uh, putting the voice as Ronan, I'm going to put it as T-A-R-A, -A, lowercase, which is the uh, string to be used if you're going to call Tara. So we should hear a female voice when I run this inference now. Hopefully will be a little bit better uh, than what I showed. You can check the logs for it all loading up. You can see we are going to run in FP8. We're running with this model here. The max model length is 2000. Trust remote code allows us to download the tokenizer. So we've done torch compile. We're able to run with a concurrency of almost 300. So you could do 300 requests maximum without running of KV cache space if you've got sequence lengths of 2048. And now the server should start up and we should be able to hit it. So I'll go back here and run this again. And hopefully the script will run and save here as tara.wave. So again, we've got the snack tokens out. It took about four seconds, some time to decode. Find the scripts in the one-click LNS repo over on GitHub for Trellis research. Yeah, so it's working great. Um, so you could hit this endpoint with multiple requests at once and you're going to be able to get back voice just like this. So I want to explain briefly how this works for those who are interested because it was quite tricky actually to get it working. It starts by understanding how VLLM works. So VLLM will take in the text prompt here and it will then tokenize it uh, using the text tokenizer. This is not the snack model. The snack model is what converts between tokens and uh, sound. But there's another tokenizer that converts the text to tokens. And then VLLM will produce token IDs. And those token IDs are automatically decoded by the tokenizer that's loaded with VLLM. So the token IDs we get back from VLLM, they're actually decoded versions of the tokens, but they're decoded using the wrong decoding method because they're using the text tokenizer whereas actually we want to convert them to audio. So this is why if you just use VLLM, you're going to get out some tokens, but they are decoded using the text tokenizer, not the snack tokenizer. So what the script does is it takes the text prompt, feeds it in, properly formatted with the right start and end tokens. Then it gets out the IDs uh, that are decoded in the wrong way. So VLLM will generate token IDs. But what we need to do is we need to take the token IDs that have been wrongly decoded, re-encode them using the text tokenizer. Then once we have them as IDs, we can reorganize them into the format needed uh, for Orpheus, and then we can snack decode them. And that will give us the final waveform. Now, if you didn't follow that, it will help if you look at my video recently around professional quality fine tuning. But you will see here um, the rough flow through we template the prompt. So we take the voice, which is Ronan or Tara, and then the text. We encode the prompt because we're going to use the completions endpoint. We're actually not using the chat completions. We're using completions, which takes in a prompt, not a series of messages. And that means you need to template it. You do not template if you use chat completions because that means the chat template is being used internally by VLLM. But since we're using completions, the templating needs to be done by us. So we template it. And templating means that we also need to put in the right start and end tokens here. So we pass in 
a string form of the correctly templated prompt, not yet tokenized, VLLM will tokenize. We get a completion. So we call the completions endpoint and we get back a response. And when this response comes back, that is going to be incorrectly decoded using the text tokenizer. So we will um, call the completions endpoint, get the response. And then when we have the response, we're going to extract what it has produced. It's going to produce a series of tokens, um, the incorrectly decoded tokens. And we're going to take those and we're going to uh, re-encode them. So you can see we take the tokens, the custom tokens produced, and we re-encode them to get back to token IDs. So now we have the token IDs. Now, a better way would be to go into VLLM and just output the token IDs, but to VLLM by default will always decode using its tokenizer. Um, so that would be the better fix, but this is the hack that we're doing at the end. And it does add time because it means we need to encode back to IDs. Then we load our snack model we reorganize all of these IDs. So this is where we reorganize them because actually the Orpheus model, it produces seven tokens in a row that all are associated with a given time window. So we need to restack these seven into one kind of bunch that is then decoded out to sound. So here's where we're restacking those seven tokens. I can actually just quickly show you if you look at, um, if you look at Orpheus, And if I just scroll down, you can see that the Orpheus model actually has got a hierarchy of seven tokens for each time window. They're produced in series, but they need to be restacked. And this is where they're restacked here. And once they're restacked, you can finally decode them with the snack tokenizer. So this is the flow that you have to go through. You have to grab the decoded tokens, decoded wrongly by the text tokenizer, re-encode them back to IDs, then reorganize them, and then uh, D. Then and decode them back using the snack tokenizer. So this is the implementation. Uh, you can hit a one-click server, as I mentioned, if you go to one-click LLMs. And I've got a sample inference script over there as well. If you want uh, to check out the readme, you can just find that either within the template. Uh, rather, it's easier to find if you go to this little button here. And you can also check it out if you've access to the advanced transcription repo. Uh, from trellis.com, where I go through in detail the data preparation and training for professional quality uh, voice cloning models. So that's it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions below. Hopefully there's broader support that comes to VLLM and other inference libraries for these text-to-speech models. But at least now there's one, there's Orpheus with the 3B, and you can get roughly the same latency as uh, somebody speaking. You could maybe move to a B200 if you want to get a bit faster. So I think that's good progress and hopefully a useful tool for everyone. Let me know questions below in the comments. Cheers, folks.